It's good to be back, America. Welcome in. It's another week. Big, big NFL action. Lots of fantasy football implications. Some really unfortunate injuries. We break down the studs and the duds of the week. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment if somebody hurt your feelings over the weekend and enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Monday, December 5th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome in, one and all. Big weekend of fantasy football. Playoff situations getting figured out. One more week after, uh, well, today in the Monday Night Football game. It's all intense now. I mean, everything across all these different leagues, it's, this isn't for fun anymore. This, this, is, <laughs> this so is for business. Serious. It's, it's a, simply to not feel pain at this point. Right. That's fair. No one wants to feel pain, and there's a lot of pain going around uh, as the minority of most leagues make the playoffs. Yeah, that's the math. Only a few teams get to enjoy uh, weeks 15, 16, and 17. We're almost there. Uh, I think the most disheartening way to miss out on the playoffs has to be via injury, and we had early game multiples uh, deciders by mm -hmm. way of injury this week. Quite a few of them. That was, it, it, those are the worst because it's not your fault. Yeah, and I think I said this last episode or a couple ago, like history will not remember that you lost due to injury. It will just remember you lost. It doesn't remember the way you lost, and that will become who you are. <laughs> I mean, the losing. The, the, yes, the world will forget. The great news is you won't. <laughs> you won't forget, and you will feel like you need to remind the world when it comes up. Uh, the You'll deucers, remember, be like, hey, uh, you remember, uh, remember week 14? 2022, <laughs> when Lamar Jackson went out after 10 snaps? Cool. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy G and Jalen Waddell. And yeah, we had injuries. We'll react. You know, we we react every week with uh, magical puns. The Deucers are here. We got them all in the building. Full strength today. The oh, whole, yeah. The whole team. Brooks has uh, gotten into his Christmas spirit, which is every year, this is what he wears. It's time. Um, it is time. Got to throw the Santa hat on. Yeah, got the company Christmas party coming up. Did you get an invite, Brooks? Or I've been waiting for it. Okay. <laughs> it's right. in the mail. It's in the mail. Just keep checking. Now we uh, we've got we've got some drama in our leagues. I'm sure you do in yours as well, and it'll be a fun tilt fest for the next seven eight days. So let's react with the community mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Let's get sophisticated with our pain. Why don't I kick it off with... Uh, oh, kick a man when he's down, I see. Yes, Cortland, nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get positive. Evan Chachingram. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that. Uh, George Sittle. Oh. Amon Ross Saint. Wow. Oh, Jeff Nilsson. Or Messiah Pacheco. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, this is another one of those. Oh, why are we doing this one? Kenneth Walking Boot. The third. <laughs> That's another injury. This is a good one. He who shall not be played. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty good. Travesty Kelsey. How about uh, Gus backwards? Oh, uh, uh, you talking about the Gus bust? Oh. But what about AJ Thrillin? And, and of course. Oh. Go ahead, Jason. Oh, I was going to say for the season. Christmas Watson. Oh, oh, yes. oh. Always leaving a couple of touchdowns beneath the tree. I mean, it's like you know what the box is. You see the box. Right? Oh, is another that a touchdown? touchdown. Is, is that it a two? Touchdown? All right. It's two, isn't it? It's a pretty big box. I can just see fantasy players writing their Christmas list to Santa. 
touchdown, mm-hmm. touchdown, <laughs> another touchdown. What has he got, like eight now in four games or something like that? He is unstoppable. I think that's right. I think it's eight in four games. We have the is technology. That, does that include his rushing touchdown from his first game? Yeah, eight and four. Wow. Eight and four. That's an average of two a game. Quick math. Um, uh, there was a uh, tweet you shared from NFL Next Gen Stats that blew my mind on his rushing attempt, uh, where if you didn't see it, it was uh, like a 46-yard rushing touchdown. Yeah, it was like an uh, end around. Yeah, and he just just turned on the Jets and uh, had the fastest speed in the NFL this year. Actually, he tied for the fastest speed, and the player who previously already had set that mark was Deshaun Jackson. The, how, how, is, is this, how is that possible? I don't know, but when I saw that, Old I was like... Old man speed. <laughs> that's not that's not a thing. <laughs> it Old is man for D- strength. You get you get <laughs> fat and strong and De- Deshaun Jackson is still the fastest man in the world. So Deshaun Jackson is 36 years old. Tyreek Hill is 28 today. So if you want to take the you're a freak and you stay a freak attitude. <laughs> sure. Like uh, maybe Mr. Tyreek Hill has a longer shelf life in dynasty leagues than we think he does. He maybe. is unstoppable he is so darn good against a great defense doesn't matter you just can't guard someone that fast yeah yeah they hadn't given up a second half touchdown in five weeks something like that until Tyreek got got loose all right into the news we go news and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance well, I saw this news before Sunday, but I didn't see the reason. Yeah. Matthew Stafford has been placed on IR. He's out for the rest of the year. The reason is a spinal cord contusion. I think that is basically we've been seeing it listed as just neck. Um, I, you know, I, I assume that's one of the same. He's dealt with some of these issues dating back to the Detroit Lions days. There's absolutely no reason that they would – uh, possibly bring him back this year. He's technically eligible uh, before the end of the season, but not not for this team. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, not an injury you read about in that way very often. I guess that's why I would throw him in the concussion protocol. Every protocol you got, if you've mm-hmm. got a spinal cord yeah. contusion. Let's get into those injuries because there were a lot of them. Ugh. Jimmy G out for the season after breaking his foot on Sunday. Mr. Irrelevant will take over Brock Purdy, who was pretty, pretty, pretty good. Two touchdowns. Looked pretty looked pretty good. And uh, they um, signed Josh Johnson from the Broncos practice squad to be the backup. Jimmy G's gone for the year. I mean, it's over. So they've lost Trey Lance. They've lost Jimmy Garoppolo. And right before this game, there were the reports that both sides were open to bringing back Jimmy G. Uh, for the future, as quarterback, I don't know. I'm sure Jimmy Graham is, or Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Jim, Graham is open. To Jimmy back Garoppolo too. is still very open to that deal, and so it does throw a little bit of unknown into the receiver room. I think with how we had seen Brandon Ayuk's emergence, um, you know, you're going to do things if you're a smart head coach to protect your young quarterback, who is a, you know, the last pick in the NFL draft. And that means getting the ball into Christian McCaffrey's hand, Mm -hmm. getting the ball in short areas to uh, Debo Samuel. Mm -hmm. And so it does – I think it actually – it's a downgrade, in my opinion, for Ayuk specifically, just downfield opportunities. It doesn't mean he will not perform. It just means that there's more risk. I think it's a downgrade for George Kittle as well, who's a very good blocker, and you might need uh, some extra protection along the way. Yeah, it's possible. Lamar Jackson, knee injury. Uh, John Harbaugh called it not season ending, more like days to weeks. Ah, uh, yes. The old days to weeks injury. Yeah. If I, I mean, if I've heard that phrase once, not all, heard it a minute. not all <laughs> days, uh, what is it? All, all weeks have days. Not that's, all days have weeks. That's, that's In true. fact, none of them. Nice. <laughs> no days have weeks. That's right. I do prefer saying days to weeks rather than, uh, it's not super serious. So it's day to day. Which turns into weeks, the, like a lot of coaches have done this year. The outcome, I mean, like Lamar Jackson's probably out for your fantasy playoffs. Yes, because he's. I mean, 
Maybe there's a, like a, a drastic turnaround we don't foresee coming, but he'll be out next week. And that means that if he's back in two weeks, I don't know if you're if it's like all systems go. You just this is a really unfortunate ending for Lamar. And you know, last week, Mike, you were out of here. That's right. We looked for you everywhere. Could never find you. Mm -hmm. um, checked almost for everywhere in the office. You checked in your My car. car. Everywhere. The back alley. Dumpsters everywhere. We, Under I the mat. You didn't look very well because I actually was in your you car. What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's yes. terrifying. Wow. Glove compartment? Mm, not, I can't give away my okay. secret. <laughs> so uh, it was a great spot. <laughs> here, Here's what I'll say, though, is like uh, on, on Spotify Live on the show – like Lamar Jackson was the answer to the question last week of player you want to bench that you're not going to bench. We called him the Kyle Pitts of the quarterback position sure. where you know his potential every week. So sitting him down for somebody that you're just aiming for 202, it doesn't feel like something you should do because you want the potential to be, you know, the, the hundred yards on the ground. Then you throw for three. Now, those teams may be afforded like he was going to have to go on the road against Pittsburgh, go on the road against Cleveland the next two weeks, which he's Lamar Jackson. So most people are just going to play him at this point. You are now forced into making a decision based on the week to week starts. We've seen Jared Goff be a streaming option. Um, there are players out there that you can look at and we're going to help you this week. Tomorrow's the waiver show. And I'm sure we're going to talk about how you replace Jimmy G and Lamar. Yeah, for sure. Uh, tomorrow we'll get into kind of the order of those guys because I'm curious, you know, do you go Tyler Huntley? Do you go Purdy? Uh, who do you prioritize? And also, that's a good. we got to workshop this Purdy. Purdy because, yeah. I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, Tua, minor ankle injury, but he's going to start next week against the Chargers. Could have returned in the game. Um, he looked like his pride was more injured than his ankle when I saw him coming off the field. That was a closer game than the final score. I mean, the the Dolphins had a chance to go down and and win it uh, at the end, but ended up but, with the. But Purdy was too much. It, they have a pretty good defense, to be honest with you. Ken Walker ankle injury mm. didn't return. Pete Carroll said he jammed his ankle. This was pretty early in the game. Only had three carries. Looked great. Twelve yards carry. And yeah, then, when uh, his first touch was thirty yards or something, right? Yeah, and. Um, then he jammed it. You got jammed. <laughs> was, uh, I've never heard of a jammed ankle, but apparently that's what we're dealing with here for Kenneth Walker. So we'll have to wait and see what kind of timeline a jammed ankle is. Uh, Traylon Burks exited with a concussion. This yeah. is the second touchdown concussion I've seen this year. Chris Olave, the rookie, did it. And now Traylon Burks did it. And um, uh, how how Burks held on to that ball, I I who, don't understand muscle memory. It was a brutal hit, um, very illegal and um, unfortunate because he could have had a very good game beyond the touchdown. Now you're going to be monitoring for activity for next week. Cortland Sutton exited with a hamstring injury, didn't put up any fantasy points this week. Hayden Hurst, calf injury, did get a few touches before that. Aaron Jones was in and out of the game with the shin injury, played just 38% of snaps. Uh, you saw him grabbing his leg multiple times. He was definitely fighting through the pain. And with the season, the way it is, you know, I'm sure he'll try to be out there, but it's not ideal. I mean, it it is at least nice to see A.J. Dillon remembered how to play football after uh, what was like 10 plus weeks of like, what the heck happened to A.J. Dillon? I know it will be no consolation, but if he were to be a – large man that won people championships at the end it would be nice yes yeah. uh odell beckham jr visiting with the cowboys today i still think that they are going to sign odell beckham jr almost guaranteed uh as opposed to the giants for fantasy purposes to me it's more of a oh man michael gallup you probably are going to be in trouble with him later on this year than it is i'm going to play beckham but more weapons for Dak. You know, Dak in that offense, they've been the number one scoring offense. And a lot of that has come on the running game. It's come with Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott, not just, you know, Dak torching people. CeeDee Lamb is great. 
and their offensive line has really gotten their act together. I remember week one, uh, obviously they lose their left tackle and, and they, they struggled. Their offensive line is now a strength again. So kudos to the coaching staff. Odell Beckham also, he visited with, um, obviously the giants. He also visited with the bills. That's a reported, um, uh, visit, which is just telling for not necessarily. I don't think he's going to go sign with the bills. He, he, he might, but it is telling that the bills are looking at their situation and saying we could use, you know, another quality receiver. Here. I think Durant is who he's consulting on which team to <laughs> go say, to. Can we get Beckham to to go to the Bills and say and get with like a dome clause? Oh, I like it. Like I will sign here and I will take a lot of money off the top, but your next stadium has to be a dome. No salary. Oh, just oh, dome. Oh, no, Beckham, just for the the goodness of uh, humanity. I guess. I mean, he doesn't like the cold. That's what he said. No one does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, nobody's like, well, the liver king. The liver king would get out there, wouldn't he? He likes the cold? I don't know. He, like, doesn't wear clothes. I've seen him laying down in a Mongolian river. What? Yeah. In yeah. a Mongolian Isn't river? Isn't that right, Al? That's right. Well, you're big, big on the liver king news, I see. <laughs> uh, I'm big on drama. It's fun to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have the Panthers expected to release Baker Mayfield, um, which I would have done after the first pass he threw for them, but they took a little while. And uh, Jalen Waddle also went down with a yeah, leg injury. That, that was awful because they, you know, he didn't do anything for fantasy. Essentially, you know, I know he's out there for 52% of the snaps in the yep. end of it, but all the important snaps early in the game, he was out, he was laboring, he was limping. One catch. Leonard Fournette tonight, Monday Night Football, questionable, expected to play Mike Evans. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore still questionable. I think he will be out there. I believe. I he need will nine add. points, by the way, from Mike Evans. Yes. You better hope Marshawn Lattimore is out. That doesn't seem like a lot, right? It doesn't seem like a lot, no. but it seems like more than he's had in his last three games. And yes, you and want Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore to not be there. Uh, yesterday, the Saints ruled several players out. They did not rule Marshawn Lattimore out, so I would expect that he suits up, but it's not a guarantee. Yeah, I think he's going to be out there. He lives for this. Yeah. He he circled this day on his calendar for, oh, I know when I'm coming back. Mike Evans they Day. They should put him on Godwin and see what happens. Right? I, I feel but like, why? Yeah. But when you why? Know, when you can remove he, oh, Mike Evans from here's the why. game. Here's why. I know let, it doesn't no, make any sense. No, let me tell you why. Oh. Because Mike Evans has removed himself from the game <laughs> the last three weeks. without He hasn't faced Marshall on Lattimore the last month. I am very I just upset at Mike Evans' output points. lately. All right? That's it. Half PPR. Brooks, you you and I are going down to the wire for this bye week. and Come on, plant man. You need the plant man. <laughs> you need Tom Brady to go for like 30, right? Yeah. What's super ironic, you're not playing each other this week, but you're battling it out. Andy needs nine points from Mike Evans while Tom Brady has a bad game. So that's, that's a tall ask. <laughs> that's a huge ask. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Studs of the Week presented by Madewell. He can't be stopped. Jalen Hurts just uh, unbelievable. I guess I should give an update that we didn't do at the top. It reminded me of this when I thought about Jalen Hurts because on – Friday when we revealed our DraftKings lineups and uh, I pivoted into Jalen uh, Warren because uh, I think Kyle said something like, I don't know, free square of the week, something mm -hmm, stupid. Mm -hmm. and Because um, it looked like Najee was going to be I up. put A.J. Brown in my lineup and then you had Burrow and last second I switched it to T. Higgins. But A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts connected this week in a huge yes. way. Uh, he is sitting 1.1 fantasy points behind Patrick Mahomes for the QB1 spot on the year. Uh, if you ended up with Jalen Hurts, which – and I do mean ended up. Like in, in a lot of drafts, there were people targeting the Russell Wilson breakout. There were people targeting, uh, obviously, Justin Herbert ahead of Jalen Hurts. So some people, you just went after him. Some people, you ended up with him. Either way, you're probably heading into those playoffs. It's been a – Good run, and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop. He has the weapons around him and the coaching staff. You know, this was what you hoped would happen when you go, oh, this this is a really hard team to run the ball on. It's really easy to throw on them. What I, you know, and their game plan is like, 
Yeah, but let's just throw the ball all over. Let's just not worry about – let's play into their weakness and take advantage of it, and I'm fine letting you throw the ball 40 times. Now, let me let me throw something out there. Just a uh, – not that you're going to bench him, but you're going to you're gonna kind of feel weird about it. Okay. Week two of the fantasy playoffs, he's going to be in Dallas. Okay. And Dallas is unbelievable as yes. a defensive unit. Also, at home against Dallas this year, 16.9 fantasy points for Jalen Hurts. Um, the schedule isn't going to talk you out of the number one quarterback, but it could change the outcome of fantasy playoffs. Yep. I, uh, <laughs> I realize. <laughs> I've got, I mean, it I'm, could change some start set decisions for if you. If I'm not like going to make the playoffs, Jason, I'm going to paint. <laughs> a picture for you yeah to at least torture it's, you on your way to a title it is it is scary um that will be uh i'll be holding my breath the the Devonte smith jalen hurts stack in week 16 needs to come through and um that's really the biggest challenge left on their schedule i mean i guess in in new york against the giants next week i would expect that game to potentially be closer but joe burrow geno smith jared goff yep 340 and two Dak Prescott three passing touchdowns on just 170 yards which is absurd I mean like there was a you had what multiple rushing touchdowns you had a defensive score you also had the CeeDee Lamb ridiculous right. that would have been a third down stop they would have kicked a field goal and he rolled over the defender and was back on his feet it was amazing and so the fact that you have all of those things going on and yet you still got three passing touchdowns from Dak is pretty wild. Yeah, when you score over 50 points, yeah. it's great, great news for fantasy. Um, Jeff Saturday uh, is mm. often shown on the camera. Uh, they <laughs> they go to him often to look at how his facial uh, reactions are going, and they have not been going well. No, I mean, I wasn't, th this wasn't, wasn't a time to flex on Saturday to me. This was a time. It to, wasn't. No, not at all. I mean, Dallas – this this offense in Indianapolis was awful before he arrived, and it's awful still. I but mean, the defense in the fourth quarter stopped tackling people. I sure, mean, but, he, but he's not quit. the tackler. So, but he's the leader of men. Sure, if you're the leader of men and your team's out there quitting, okay, that's not good leadership. I mean, I I think at, at any time if we want to make that argument against him, sure. But Dallas has been blowing the socks off of people. We're not calling for the firing of, uh, what, Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota after that absolute drubbing. So. They didn't put up 50 points in Minnesota. How many did they put up? 40. No. Oh, okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, just saying. 50, 50 burgers, that's a big burger. That's uh, an extra patty on that burger. <laughs> Five patties. One for each 10 points you get. Uh, Dallas makes quarterbacks look dumb. I mean, they just do. Yeah. And, and Matt Ryan. They get – in his defense, Matt the, Ryan makes himself look dumb too. Oh my the, goodness! The game was actually close, like for a lot of for a lot of the game, it was it was pretty tight. And then just over the second I, half, it exploded. I just fourth quarter really. I just saw Mike. You need to get a big win next week. Yes, um, Andy. You need Mike to lose it. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mike cannot lose next week. Uh oh. Because you have the Dallas defense, and I am seeing that they play the Houston Texans. I'm pretty next happy week. about that. I mean, yeah. they're going to score 30 points. Pretty happy points. about also, that. Also, apologies for uh, the I, the fact that I said I was going to play Seattle over Cleveland on the <laughs> defensive side of things, which I did do to my own demise. Yeah. But Cleveland ended up, you know, winning with all defense. Yes. So. Uh, the the Texans are just triple A right now. Christian McCaffrey, running back stud, ten targets, Give eight me for them 80 targets, and a touchdown. You love to see it. Seventeen carries. I believe he was on the field more than eighty percent of snaps. So obviously no health issues. And going forward, he is going to be the one hundred percent center of this offense. Yeah, and he's going to help Brock Purdy a ton in terms of you know. Just the emergency check down and the panic mode and all of that. Tony Pollard. Yeah. RB7 on the year. Zeke, another great game. They can both do it every week, and they both will next week against Houston. They should. 
for the first two quarters of the game. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the problem. Like it, it's it's been an issue facing Houston because Houston can't keep the game remotely competitive. Sure. Great so, news for me. The defense stays on the field. They do. They do. Maybe they'll go back. Was it Kyle Allen again for them? It, it was. was, right? Yeah. Who's who's there? Is it Malik Davis? Is that the rookie that comes in? Yeah. Behind? Okay, so you could play Malik Davis as the <laughs> third running back because <laughs> he'll be playing be the, second, the second half of that game. DFS? Oh, man. You never know. Josh <laughs> Jacobs is now the RB1 on the year. 26 for 144 and 1. Ridiculous. Well injured. A.J. Dillon, 18 for 93 and 1. He's alive. Yeah, right into the bye week. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I mean, that's timed up well for Aaron Jones. Here's a big one. Here's a and a great call, Andy. Your start of the week, say, giving people confidence to put him back in your lineup. DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift was awesome. Fourteen Jeez. for sixty-two and a touchdown. Four for forty-nine. But the the most important thing here was the shift was made. He was their number one running back. On the day, he out uh, carried Jamal Williams, out snapped Jamal Williams, more routes than Jamal Williams. This was a boost of confidence for his just his his health. Saying, "Okay, we think DeAndre Swift is ready to uh, go back into the primary running back role that we have not seen since early in the season," and it happened. And they won. And Jamal Williams still scored. Yeah, I, which well, is because they make him yeah, they make him that, do that every week. I mean, honestly, the the DeAndre Swift rushing touchdown was yeah, you, you, you count your blessings there. That was they went into hurry up, and so they didn't take Swift off the field. And then Swift, I mean, it was his rushing touchdown was spectacular. <laughs> it of, was spectacular. Of but when I watched it, I just thought. Jamal Williams would have just gone straight <laughs> forward and in. He Probably. made it so difficult, bounced it out, had to stiff arm yeah. a guy. Did great, but like Jamal Williams would have just gone straight up yep. the middle and been fine. Samaje Devine, 21 for 106, <laughs> seven targets. Uh, looks great, honestly. I mean, he just looks very – I mean, it's like a swap. I was I was talking to Jason I, like last week about P. Ryan of – In his car? Uh, Well, no, I didn't talk in the car. Oh, you have okay. to, if, when you're hiding – you have to remain silent <laughs> okay. or people find you. All right. That um, makes sense. Like Samaj P. Ryan in the back in that draft, <clears throat> I loved P. Ryan. Like he was a very interesting prospect. The to me. pain bot. Yeah, the Samaj pain bot goes to Washington, looked like he was going to be a lead running back. And then it seemed within a year of his career, like, oh, this is a this is a massive bust. I think he was a third round pick or so, uh, day two pick. And you're like, oh, well, that was a huge miss. That guy is is toast. And then he goes to the Bengals and like he's had an extremely productive career. It's and it just it was got me thinking of oh, fourth round. Thank you, Kyle. Got me thinking of like all these players where we immediately like oh, that player was a bust because they're not huge for fantasy football and yet they're in the league for 8 years or whatever. You're like, "Oh, well." Yeah, definitely had a successful had a NFL career, career if yeah. he, even if he has it for fantasy, but what we see sometimes with these backups is that they get more work than the starter when the starter goes down. That's happened two weeks uh, in sure. a row for Samaj Pirine, basically getting all of the work, higher snap percentage, targets, routes run, carries, um, as far as running back carry share, than Joe Mixon had. And that's because... because yeah, there's no Pirine behind Pirine. Yeah, exactly. So that's where your Alexander Madison types... Um, there's going to be one or two of these guys that win people championships due to injury going forward. Cam Akers went 17 for 60 and two touchdowns for the Rams. Okay. And Kyron barely got any work. It's yep. a trap. <laughs> he gets the Raiders. Here, yeah, it's it might not be a trap this oh, week. Man. And their offense looked uh, markedly more competent with John Wolford in there. Like that was the difference between – this offense uh, this week and the past couple of weeks with Bryce Perkins. For sure, for sure. I, I Honestly, I, I had forgotten that Wolford was coming back and was getting healthy oh. because <laughs> Perkins <laughs> Perkins is, um, well, he's a third-string quarterback for right. a reason. There's a reason Perkins are shutting down around the country. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. I don't know. Wow, yeah. there's three people that understand that yeah. joke. Saquon Barkley, Lost Dalvin it. Cook, <laughs> Isaiah Pacheco, David Montgomery, Zonovan Knight, other studs for the week. Dude, Bam Knight getting it done. He had a huge run in this game, like a what, like a 48-yard yeah. run? But but five targets? 
I mean, 15 carries is bam, just right off of the bench into your lineup. Yeah. I mean, it. Uh, it's nice to see. All right, we, uh, we're we going to take a break. We'll come back to some wide receivers. He can't be stopped. In fact, I am. No. I, th- I think the most impressive thing about Devontae Adams, who had 12 targets, 8 for 177 and 2, is that on a weekly basis, he gets so open that it defies explanation. Makes no sense. It's like he's got a force field that's like 15 yards around him, and it just pushes DBs away. He's always wide, stinking open for these big touchdowns. The so, last five weeks, he's finished as the wide receiver one, the wide receiver six, the wide receiver one, the wide receiver 32, still double-digit fantasy points, and so far the wide receiver one. He is absolutely Where is he on the year right, right now? now? Uh, right now he's the the wide receiver one. Well, that seems good. <laughs> that seems pretty good. And and honestly, there was there was giant questions coming into this season yes, about was. Tyreek Hill, about Devontae Adams, these elite superstar wide receivers losing their quarterbacks, changing scenery. Will they be able to do it for inferior quarterbacks? I mean, uh, at least in in Devonte Adams' situation, he was going from a first ballot Hall of Famer to uh, Derek coming Carr. off an MVP season. Absolutely, and so you wondered, can he get it done? Yep. Yeah, he yes. was our number one ranked wide receiver on the week, and he's been one three three times in five weeks. A uh, lot of doubt before the season. Pretty good, pretty mm-hmm. good player. Um, first player in NFL in an F. I'll do out the. Let me try yeah. that again. First player in NFL history to have seven plus one hundred yards game, hundred yard games in three straight seasons. He's Impressive. very good, and he had one of the greatest catches of the that season didn't count. that didn't count yeah. because he, he barely he he didn't get the second foot all the way in bounds. But I mean, the catch was like, what? How did that? How? It, it's like he has spikes on his hand. It's not even <laughs> stick them. It's just. Just that ball hits the hand. Need another new ball. <laughs> yeah. Ball's deflated. Yeah, I mean he's uh it's ancestral living. It's the uh it's the Liver King style. That's oh, what we're back to the going. Liver King, huh? I was just doing that for Al. <laughs> See what kind of reaction I get up there. I heard a giggle. Uh Amon Ra St. Brown, twelve targets, eleven catches, one fourteen and two, left injured, came back immediately and wasn't injured. Yeah, he's uh, really tough. And eleven of twelve is a very good rate of catching the ball. AJ Brown. Revenge game, 8 for 119 and 2. Revenge is served. Cold to the Titans. Devontae Smith, late, uh, you know, was injured all week. Mm -hmm. Um, Ah, Late removal from the groin index and then 5 for 102 and 1. He's been very good since Dallas Goddard has gone down. Target share has been great. Another eight targets in this game. But it was really nice to see A.J. Brown back into superstardom level. Speaking of superstardom level, Garrett Wilson, yes. eight for 162 on 15 targets. He yes. fell down on, I think, all of the misses. That's how I felt watching the game. He was just falling down all the time. In the first quarter, he basically did nothing. It looked like, oh, man, this is going to be such a bust play. Nope. I mean, unstoppable. Tyreek Hill, DK Metcalf, McLaurin, Christian Watson, we talked about him. Um, Tyler Lockett, I lied. He was able to get into the end zone again. Five straight games. You cannot stop him. I won't bet against him. Stephon Diggs scored. CeeDee Lamb got another touchdown. And Keenan Allen, also a uh, start of the week this past week. Garrett Wilson was Jason's. Keenan was mine. And Keenan Man. went six for 88 and a touchdown. 14 targets turned into six catches for Keenan? Dude, the coverage was Whew. tight on Mr. Keenan Allen. Watching that game, that's wild. They had uh, Mr. Herbert off his spots all the time, and it was showing up in the accuracy. Herbert did not play very well. I'm no. I, I'm really disappointed with this offense, and it's it's so tough to ever make an offensive coordinator change when you have a superstar quarterback because they do enough where your offense is good enough where you can't fire an offensive coordinator. But it, it, something's wrong with this. They should be better than what they are. To me, that game just came down to never getting to plant his feet and throw the football. The offensive line 
They were down three offensive yeah, line Yeah, you starters. felt it, yeah. man. You did. And that, that pass rush in, in, uh, with the Raiders, like, they can get after it, and they did. Tight ends, here's your uh, top tight end of the week. great. Number one, the best tight end. <laughs> Noah Fant, four for 42 <laughs> and a touchdown. Four for 42 and a touchdown is number one. Evan, four for 42. Who would Evan you Schmingram also scored. Uh, which is fantastic. But who, which player would you rather have on your NFL team, Noah Fant or Russell Wilson? Which what player on your NFL team? Who's more valuable <laughs> to an NFL team, Noah Fant? I mean, <laughs> one of these is actively destroying a team. Is the Russell Wilson trade? And I know we're not in the pooped yet, right? Is the Russell Wilson trade going to go down as the worst trade in professional sports history? At least modern like and, in our era definitely unless he turns it around which some people still believe can happen yeah, you like know how hurt next is he? year yeah the injury hack it yada yada and next year he'll he'll be better there are hopes for sure there have to be hopes uh, otherwise you it's too big a pill to swallow if i told you that that i had like a 230 million dollar grab bag that you could buy and you brought. I can it, buy the money. You can buy the grab bag, Mike. Oh. It costs two hundred thirty million dollars. Okay, it's gonna be something real good in there. Might and be you, a boat. You could be anything. And you go home and you open that thing up, and there's just a dookie in that <laughs> bag, and the aroma, yeah, of two hundred thirty million dollars on nothing. Well, shame on me for not noticing the smell earlier until I got home. Yeah, but see, somehow Seattle they knew the smell. The smell had been permeating the locker room. What is the Denver Broncos pick right now. I believe it. it's somewhere between the number two and the number four. And by the Denver Broncos pick, I do mean the Seattle Seahawks right. pick. Um, yeah, the, the Eagles are picking at six. I mean, Russell Wilson does whatever he can do to help the Seattle Seahawks. He is a true Seahawk <laughs> through He's and through. He's their 12th man. He <laughs> is their 12th man. This is all part of the long play. There's going to be a documentary about a decade from now about how Russ went in and sat down with Pete Carroll and said, hey, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to trade me for a haul, and I'm going to go tank the picks that you're going to get back in, in response. It's the, it's the only thing that could make possible sense for how putridly bad he, he has been. He is the 12th man. And could you imagine? That's so funny. Could you imagine <laughs> being a Broncos defender? You held the Ravens to three points through 55 minutes, <laughs> and you lost that game. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right now, Seattle has the third pick. The Lions have the Rams pick, which is number four. And the Eagles have the sixth pick in the draft. So. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And the uh, the Houston Texans will be drafting a new franchise quarterback. Yeah, the congratulations, first pick in the draft. Houston. Uh, but, no, I mean, the tight ends this week, they were players you didn't play. Noah Fant. Uh, maybe you played Shmevin Schmingrum. Yeah, I played Evan. Here. I did. Three for, or I'm sorry, five for 30 and one. Yeah. Greg Dulcich, yeah. six for 85. Okay, okay. I mean, if Cortland Sutton was to be out a little bit of time. Sure. And then uh, Gerald Everett, five for 80. Cole Komet, six for 72. And the Muth got Luth for yeah, a the, long 59-yard run down the sideline. Also should have got Luth for a 40-yard touchdown up the seam and freaking pick it. Pickett is is just it was it was the it was the Dalton Schultz the seam route just right up the middle and it was hilarious because then I watched that in the morning and then Sunday night you see uh, you see Dak and Schultz run it to perfection and you're like dude it's so easy it's it's just right there it was a free touchdown yeah yeah it's like, uh, and and Cole Komet it had another decent sure. week I mean six well, for seventy two seven targets no no Mooney. Right, they're going into buy, which stinks. But uh, you, you know, you you look. There's been a clear change here. Uh, four of the last five weeks, he's had six or more targets. So he's he's in starting yeah. consideration. Not this week, though. Those were the studs of the week presented by Madewell. Don't wait to upgrade your denim game. Go to Madewell.com today and get twenty dollars off your next pair of jeans. Use the code Footballers twenty. Yeah, the Bears are the Bears are just finding a way to lose pretty they're yes they're doing they're doing fantastic work they have the second overall pick coming up at like 
and they don't have to, at least to, I can't imagine, they're even considering taking a quarterback there, which means that with the quarterback draft class that is coming up, you could trade that second-round pick if you want and load up and get a couple future first-round picks moving down just a little bit. So they're for the future of where they were at the beginning of this year and going into the next year's draft class, they have a, I think it's about as good as it possibly could have went for them. It, Which it, is their plan, right? And they'll yeah. have they'll have the benefit of the lack of investing financially in the quarterback position for a while because of getting that young rookie contract. So you'll be able to you could spend the money on Claypool if you want to. Like you could sure. spend the money in other places and get away with it. And part of why they are so bad this year is because they were doing a salary carve out. It's not just picks. Yeah. It's they knew that their contract situation re required a purge and they are going to go from it, no money available to an, a real player uh, and they can build this team up really quick. Pooped in his big boy pants. All right, let's get into the duds. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, yes. And we've got a photo. Deshaun Watson, 12 for 22 for 131. No touchdowns, one pick. I think he had another pick called back. Oh, Voldemort. He, oh, to be fair, he hasn't played in a long time, and he looked like he hasn't played in a long time. 700 days. He was terrible. If you didn't now, obviously you look at you look at the line. Twelve for twenty two is not good. One hundred and thirty one is not good. No touchdowns is not good. Interception not good. It was worse than that. Like if you watched, <laughs> his passes were horrible. They were hitting the ground before yeah, wide some receivers. Strings, yeah. I mean, he was just completely off the mark. Um, this was Houston. Like you get to go to Cincinnati next week. Yeah, we we talked Oof. about the fact that if he if you want to throw against Houston, you can. You just don't usually need to. He actually for a, a chunk of this game needed to and couldn't. So it his number one target by a wide margin was Amari Cooper, and that is good. But obviously the the targets have to improve going forward, which they will. Um, but uh, yeah, he who shall not be named or played. <laughs> Kirk Cousins against the Jets. Uh, I thought that the Vikings were going to blow them out. It was looking that way. I think it was 20-3, to three, and then they brought the comeback. comeback. I mean, if Braxton Berrios just catches the perfectly thrown ball, the mm, game... Mm. Huh? No, huh? not perfectly. No, I saw that play. It was a little behind him. Okay. He still should have caught it. It okay. was a he caught a catchable, a yeah. very yeah, catchable, catchable ball, ball that yeah. went right into his arms in a path that was so hard to get to it had to be side armed. And uh anyways, he caught it, but then he dropped it, and the, the Jets would have won that game. Um or at least would have been up with uh a little bit of time left. And uh then No, they had what two chances out? down in the well, then they Red got zone. they got the ball back again later and had to come back, but then they were struggling against the clock, had to throw deep, and that's when the, the second guaranteed interception happened. You got that call? Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> it, it was like the first play of the game and the last. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. Um, Mike but I was White, impressed overall in the fact that they fought and, and got yeah, back in the game. Mike White did enough definitely to win this game, but there was one thing that was so – upsetting it was the first interception it could have been a second interception like the next drive he kept throwing these crossing routes perfect read perfect timing and he just threw it just barely behind the player over and over and over it's like he just didn't correct it and I was so frustrated because you know everything else was was really good but he's showing a lot of signs of you know being a very good draft pick at quarterback. All right. Running backs. I don't know what the snow situation was, Man. but it, it was really bad. Derrick Henry, 11 for 30. Mm -hmm. Over the last month, Derrick Henry's longest carry in four games is 10 yards. Is that he true? Is, he has been sub three yards per carry in three of the past four games, 
And that fourth one was against Green Bay where he ran for 3.1. He got 28 carries. I guess he made up for it with the like screen pass in that one yes, game. In the, yeah, in the Green Bay game. And the, uh, uh, the, the throwing the touchdown also helped Derek – uh, that week yeah it, it, but it, it's me, been a bit it's been a bad month outside of the green bay game uh i i'm not worried uh the next three matchups jacksonville jaguars los angeles chargers houston yeah, texans that's, that's not too bad chargers texans in the first two weeks of the fantasy playoffs so it's I just mean, we I'm, it's just weird to have that long of a stretch of derrick henry's being really really inefficient the gus bust Six for 12. Yeah. Both running backs, which, you know, we highlighted the matchup was rough. I don't, you know, I think Jeff Wilson was somebody that you kind of wanted to play. One carry This was for so, three was, yards. Yeah, very bizarre. So weird. Raheem Mostert, who had been dealing with the injury, who had been relegated to the backup role behind Jeff Wilson since the moment Jeff Wilson arrived, was the clear starter. 61% of snaps for Raheem Mostert, 37% of snaps for Jeff Wilson. Neither of them were relevant, but it was so Shanahan y. Sam again. Daniel Brad the Shanahan against over. Yep. Yeah, to be like, oh, <laughs> you you don't know who my running back is. <laughs> uh, Aaron Jones, he was on and off the field. Yeah. Uh, Travis Etienne had a fumble, 13 for 54. Jermichael Tasty. Did I, say, I didn't say tasty. Did I think I? you might have said tasty. Wasn't tasty. Zero no. for zero. Zero targets. Unleash hasty, you cowards. I mean, this was um, no hasty. It was a very we, – we talked no about this leading up to the week that Detroit has become a difficult matchup for running backs for fantasy. They've actually been very, very, very good and against great opponents like Saquon, like Travis Etienne, so it didn't work out. This next week is another – Brutal matchup for running backs against Tennessee. And uh, you also had uh, Jordan Mason getting the next snaps for yep. San Francisco. It was not TDP. No, no. Ty Davis Price not involved. Patterson, Cordero, uh, he had like a run in the middle of the game where they used him, and then they weren't using him a lot. Didn't catch a pass. Antonio Gibson surprisingly was active for this game but did nothing. Um, that was kind of your dud list at running back. At wide receiver. The Gibson part was weird because like, he was on the field. Uh, he got a, a decent amount of snaps. He just wasn't getting work. I mean, probably because of the injury. But it's just like, why are you why are you putting him out there then? I don't know, put Robinson out. That was weird. Jalen Waddle got hurt. Just one catch for nine yards. Omari Cooper, nine targets, just four for 40. Uh, Sky Moore didn't catch a uh, pass. And then Juju is just three for 35. Mm. They are uh, working the ball around all over the place. In fact, it just seems like there's a lot more MVS involvement in the last couple of weeks. When teams blitz Patrick Mahomes, he's taking deep shots to MVS. Brandon Ayuk, 5 for 46. Michael Pittman, just 2 for 16. Oh, oh, this is so great. Uh, our Pittman uh, versus Paris Campbell <laughs> water bet was the greatest thing that's ever happened. Um, now, re reminder, we did say at the end of that uh, heated argument, the answer is start neither. And and that was the correct answer. But I was wrong. Uh, Paris Campbell had the better s game slightly um, than Michael Pittman. But what was so ironic and awesome was that my matchup last night, and it wasn't even my matchup, but I have a, a draft pick that was super affected, and I had to root for Paris Campbell last night to get six fantasy points, and he barely did. Thank you, Michael Pittman, for... Uh, taking digs away and uh, letting Campbell play. Yeah, and since week four, I believe, uh, Paris Campbell's now more fantasy points per game than Michael Pittman. Both of them under 10 a game. Both of them just... Colts are a disaster. Yeah, the offense is incapable of doing anything. George Pickens, this was uh, one of those cardio days for George Pickens, which ironically, and never not working last week, because of his targets per route run... He was the one rookie that Jason highlighted as uh, risky business moving forward compared to the Garrett Wilsons of the world, the Olaves. And this was exactly what can happen. Yeah, on Sunday Live, we had a, a couple of George Pickens questions, and I quizzed Brooks as to the previous month where Pickens has been good, what his average receptions per game were, and it was two and a half. Yeah. 
and and he hit the under on that. So this is not an offense you really want to target. Deontay Johnson was that like his best game of the year in some ways, but it was still bad. It just you you can't really rely on wide receivers getting it from a rookie quarterback. And then Zay Jones was a mirage. Uh, oh, we talked man. about him being a potential trap here on the show last week, how we'd be trying to get Christian Kirk into lineups if we could, but he was expensive in DFS compared to Zay Jones. Early in the game, Zay Jones had a little slant route. Would have been a touchdown. Hit him in the hands no. and just dropped it. Jacoby Myers, three for 22. Adam Thielen, two for 27. Was definitely worried about Thielen in this game against the Jets. Sure. Travis Kelsey, four for 56, which, you know, wouldn't be the end of the world, but he fumbled and lost the ball. So, really bad day for Kelsey. George Kittle, Dalton Schultz, TJ Hawkinson. All of your, like, tight ends that you were, like, sure could be better than Noah Fant were bad. <laughs> and then uh, Gooses from Gesicki and Knox, Foster Moreau, three targets, one for 32. Yeah, Tyler. 30 to 40. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Aim high. Aim for your D plus C minus average, kids. Tyler Higby, two for fourteen. That's it for the duds. Yeah, I mean that's it for the studs. The the tight end duds. It's nice when it's everybody, because then sure. your opponent didn't really go off on you. the 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 most realistic good tight end that could have been played against you is Evan Ingram, and he had thirty yards. All right, that is going to do it for today. Evan Kachingram. <laughs> whatever it was <laughs> it was chiching oh ch well yeah that's nice are you a are you a cutching or a chutching um give me give me a situation <laughs> just your that when you on a monopia like when you i'm a chiching yeah a, i am too i'm are a chiching I'm, ch I'm a cutching are you cutching okay i can i can do Brooks? I, I can pull off both methods but i'm a chiching brooks are you a cutching I'm definitely cha-ching. Okay. It's probably Al, the Al, you're nodding. You're a cha-ching? Cha-ching. Cha-ching all the way. Oh, oh, you're the only Owen yeah. Wilson here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ka-chow. I just feel like ka-ching is what, what he would say. Uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Big episode tomorrow. Waiver Day. Good luck tonight. I know a lot of playoff matchups coming down to this Tampa Bay game. 40 points, Chris Godwin. You can do it. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.